Hello everybody, greetings once again from Chennai in the southern part of India. Today I am going to talk about fingerprints, whether you are Bane or a Boon. Fingerprints as everybody knows are distinctive patterns on the tips of the fingers including the thumb caused by tiny ridges and furrows covering these sites. No one in the world has fingerprint patterns exactly like anyone else in every detail. Even identical twins do not have similar fingerprints. This pattern then carries on unchanged throughout life. Sir Francis Galton was the first to record this finding. Galton studied at Cambridge. He was a polymath and he was a contemporary of Edward Nettleship whose name will be familiar to dermatologists because this gentleman described a condition called urticaria pigmentosa. Classification of fingerprints was first suggested by Sir Edward Henry in 1901, who recognized four main types, the arch, the loop, the whorl, and the composite. This unique individual pattern of fingerprints was used for identifying people. The criminology department grabbed it for catching thieves, rapists and murderers who leave their fingerprints in the crime scene. It has thus many other uses in our daily life and therefore can be considered to be a boom. Can fingerprints be absent in some individuals and if so, what will be its implications? Inherited absence of fingerprint is due to absence of ridges caused by a mutation in a skin specific isoform of smart cad one Ridge dysplasia is also reported in some genodermatoses like nagelli yatherson franceschetti syndrome. This is an autosomal dominant disorder characterized by brown reticulate pigmentation on the trunk and upper extremities and it also has uh, heat intolerance hyperkeratosis of the palms and soles, and absent dermatoglyphics. In kid syndrome, keratitis with progressive corneal opacification, I for ichthyosis and D for deafness. And in this syndrome also, there is absent fingerprints. In heterotic ectodermal dysplasia, flattening of ridges may be profound. Many pathological conditions can result in distortion of fingerprints like for example in psoriasis, in various erythrodermas, systemic lupus, scleroderma and so on. In Raynaud's disease with repeated ischemia, the fingerprints may totally vanish. Frequent use of high potency topical steroids can erase the fingerprints. In atopic dermatitis, even in the absence of active eczema, the fingertips can have reversible ridge flattening. Constant immersion of fingers in detergents can cause a dermatoglyphia. Irritant dermatitis from tulips and pineapples in people who are handling these frequently can also cause absence of fingerprints. Some drugs, particularly capicitabine, which is given for metastatic cancer, can cause disappearance of fingerprints. Scarring processes can ablate fingerprints. The critical depth necessary to accomplish obliteration without subsequent degeneration being one millimeter. Such scarring can be achieved by application of strong acids and alkalis or by derm abrasion. Notorious criminals deliberately do this to bamboozle the FBI, Scotland Yard and other law enforcement agencies. It is not an in any way disabling to the patient concern. But problems arise when such individuals try to visit other countries. For instance, in the United States on an average 30 to 40 million people apply for visas to enter the country after biometric monitoring. The screened rejection rate is about 1 to 2 percent, many of them based on fingerprint incompatibility. Professor Julian Perber, a well-known pediatric dermatologist from the UK, he humorously labeled this condition as 
immigration delay disease. Flattening of the ridges can also occur in the elderly due to loss of dermal elasticity and dermal thinning. As an octogenarian, I have encountered this problem while entering the United Kingdom. At the immigration counter, the officers find it difficult to get satisfactory fingerprints. So every finger they try it out and there is a considerable delay. Whereas the younger members of my family, they walk through the counter quite easily. So it would be wise for those with above conditions that I have just now mentioned to carry a detailed medical certificate from a qualified dermatologist to be shown at the immigration counter when they are traveling abroad. Thank you very much.